Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I set up the logic for the wiring task. And I'll try a different format for this video. So let me know in the comments what do you think about it, if you like it or not. So currently, I have the game running and this is the visual setup. There's no logic that is active on it. I already went and created all of the logic. And for this one, I created a lot of super units. So the first part that I did in the logic was add the ability of dragging this wire with the mouse. So let me turn that on. And this is how it looked like. So you can just click on the collider and you can drag that part. So for that, I need to get the mouse position and convert it to world space. And this is how it looks like. I'll write in description how you can get all of these assets for this game. So if you want to play around with it after you watch the video, check the description. So this is a super unit of converting the mouse position to world space. After that, I go inside this super unit, which is the update wire. And this super unit is in charge of updating the part of the, this wire. And currently, I have only set position enabled. So whatever the position was calculated from the mouse position, that's what's being set right now. After that, I want to rotate this wire based on the direction from the start point to the mouse position. And if I connect that, now you can see that if I move it around, I get the direction, same thing here, and on this side as well. Now if you go look inside the super unit, my last video was about direction and I decided to make it when I was doing it for this video. So if you want to check out more information about that, you can look at that. But one thing that I had to use here was get the lossy scale and multiplier by X. And if you saw the video of me setting this up, I used a negative scale to set up this site. So if I skip that step, what would happen is those wires would get inverted as soon as I touch them like that. So that's not what I'm looking for. So to fix that, I actually check the scale and make sure that the direction is also accounting for the scale that I have on the X axis. So that's the direction logic. After that, the next step was to scale it. So if I enable the scale wire, now you can see that the portion that I was planning to scale is scaling correctly and it works pretty good. Now I did some modification to the prefab and also to the end image to get it working properly. So first what I did was went to the wire end and switched the pivot point. So it was on on center. But if I had it on center, then I would have to move the position of it. And instead of calculating for the position, what I did was change the pivot point to the right side. And that allowed me to scale from that point and over here. And also I changed some position of the wiring after that. But if you want to get this prefab, check the description. So that's some of the modification that I had to do to get this scaling to work. Now, if we take a look at the scaling super unit inside here, I used the sprite render size to scale that. And all I did was calculating the distance between the two points, between the start point and between the end, whatever the distance, set that to the X value of the size. And I just got the Y value from the original. That's the logic for scaling. That's all I have inside of the update wire super unit. After that, what I did was, you see how the wires are just sticking around. I wanted to reset to the starting position if you haven't made the right connection. For that, I used on mouse up event. And on the start event, I was saving that start position. And on mouse up, I used that start position to update a wire with that position. Now, if I click on the connection and let it go, you can see that if I don't make a connection, it just goes back. And I still don't have the logic for making the connection. So that's the next step. To make the connection, I did a physics test, checking for nearby connections. And if you're close enough, it snaps to that connection. Let's go inside this super unit. So inside here, here is the physics test that I do. So I'd look for overlapping circle and I look for all because both of the sides have a collider. So if you just check for one, then you don't have control if it's overlapping this one or that one. So to avoid that, I use get overlapping circles all. And then I have to do a for each loop to look through those colliders. And the check that I do here is to make sure that it's not self. Ignore the collider on the object that I'm actually moving. So, and it's pretty simple inside here. 
it just gets the game object of the collider and compares it with self. So if it's not equals, then I get the position of the collider object and set it using the update wire. So that's the third place where I use this super unit update wire. After I got this connection to kind of work, it's still going back to the start. The next thing that I did was check if both of the wires have the same name. And if you remember in the hierarchy, when I was setting up, I was using wire, red, green. So those names and both sides have the same names. So left and right. So I decided to use those names to check if the connection is correct. And in this case, I get the parent of the current objects, get their names if they're equal, and then I pass out true. If they are correct, then I go through this super unit done with and all it does is turns on the light, which is this get child zero. Probably not the best to find object like that, but uh, just a quick way of doing it. And after I set the light to be on, I set the macro to be disabled. So you can't disconnect the wires after you have connected them correctly. So if I try now, if I go on the green one, it still breaks the connection after I release. And if I go on the red one, you can see that the yellow light turned on and now I can't disconnect it. And I did it on the, both the one that you're moving and on the one that you connect it to. Because in my case, you can actually drag both sides and you can connect them this way as well. And the very last step was to count all of the lights on. And when all of the lights are on, then display that you have won the game. The logic for counting up, I used from the first game that I made I did change it to have more generic names because the names that I used there was specifically for Switch. I saw a change to some generic names. So now let's try connecting all of these wires. And there we go. We get the you did it. Let me show you that flow graph for the counting. So here it is. The logic is exactly the same as I used for the game one. The only thing that is different is that I put more of a general names here. So there's a lot of logic that is going on here. And I decided to try out this format for the video. Let me know what you guys think if you liked it or you didn't like it. And if you want to see the C sharp version of this video, there's gonna be a link in description when that version is gonna be available. So thanks for watching, click on the like button if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video.